Hi, this is an FSC configuration tutorial for the VEC and the set I'm going to use is uh, my 12S electric longboard and a Faraday motion motor which also has uh, hall sensors so I'm going to show how to use hall sensor support for FSC as well and uh, well the battery is fully charged right now so it's running on full 12S voltage and the first thing to do is connect build EC tool and read the configuration. This is the default configuration, comes from the start, so I'm going to show everything that I have to change. And you start by setting the current limits and so on as usual in the motor tab. And then you set the motor type to FOC and write the configuration. After that, you go to the FOC tab and measure the motor parameters. First the resistance and inductance. You see the motor is making some noises now when it sends signals to send to measure those. Yeah, and uh, we got uh, 0 0.02 ohms resistance. Now this is the phase resistance. So, for example, if you measure the resistance between two motor terminals, we'll, you will get uh, twice this value. We have 23 microhenry phase inductance, same thing here. If you measure it between two terminals, we, you will get twice this value. And the next thing to measure is the flux linkage. You use the measure lambda button for that. <coughs> now we got this value. Um, before we measure this, you should have the resistance measured because it will uh, use the resistance to calculate this value as well. After that, you Calculate the parameters for the current control loop, and this is done based on the time constant that you choose. You can keep the default one and the resistance and inductance of the motor. And then you click apply for those settings and apply for the KP and KI settings for the current controller and write configuration. And now we should be able to run the motor in FC mode. I'm going to use the arrow keys on the keyboard right now. We can see that it uh, seems to work. And uh, a few parameters that you can adjust is, for example, the switching frequency. The default one is 20 kilohertz. If you, for example, increase it to 40 kilohertz, you will get, uh, well, the switching frequency is 20 kilohertz, but uh, the frequency of the current control loop is only half of that, and you can hear some modulation noise from that. So to get rid of that noise as well, to make it uh, as quiet as you can get, you can run it on 40 kilohertz. Let's see if we can hear any difference from before. Now in practice, uh, you can keep it on 20 kilohertz because the difference when you use it on the floor or on the ground, at least in my experience, you don't hear almost any difference at all between 20 and 40. But uh, compared to the BLDC, this is much more quiet. Also, when you run 40 kHz, you will get uh, more switching losses in both the MOSFETs and the DRV will get warmer. And if you have a high battery voltage, such as in this case, and run a very high switching frequency, this will uh, put some strain on the DRV as well because it has to put in a lot of, well, not a lot of, but quite some current for switching the MOSFETs. So, we're going to back to 20 kHz and um, right configuration. Another thing that you can adjust is the open loop RPM. So what happens in sensorless mode is that uh, sometimes when you start, the observer can get stuck and the motor won't move. And what happens then is that if this happens with some filtering for longer than this amount of time, the motor will rotate in open loop using this ERPM for this amount of time. And uh, then it will go back to closed loop and hopefully the observer has picked up where the motor is when this is done. And uh, sometimes you can adjust this a bit to get a better, better start, but in most cases I think you can just keep the default value and it should be fine and wor work well. So let's go to the app configuration tab. What I also have here is a Nikokama receiver connected to an I2C port. And we're going to use this one to test. So first we read the configuration, select the non-check app, write configuration, and reboot. 
and switch on the nunchuck. And once it's up and running, we should be able to. Yeah, run it using the nunchuck. So, let's give this a try. <coughs> Unplug the USB cable. Let's see if it works. And it does work. And you can see that it's very nice and quiet. And now we're going to configure the hall sensors. So plug in the USB cable again. And the hall sensors usually come with, uh, let's see where I put it, a cable like this one, which has a small connector. And the pinout in the VEC is uh, exactly the same as this one. But it has a larger connector. So what you can do is you can just uh, cut the cable and connect them one by one so that you get the same order of the connections. And then it should work. Then you can uh, simply plug it into the hall sensor connector. And I have done it on this motor already. So we're going to plug in the hall sensors to the hall sensor port. And configure those. So, <coughs> let's see, connect, and when you do any configuration and have an app activated, you should make sure that it doesn't use, have an output, because this can mess with the configuration. So you're going to disable the control mode for the non-track, and write, and then we go back to motor configuration, and to the FOC tab, and in the FOC tab we're going to use the detect hall sensor button. The default current to use to drive the motor in open loop is 15 amps. I'm going to use a bit higher current since this motor is rather large, but I think it should work fine with 15 amps as well. And uh, measure. What it does now is rotate the motor slowly, first in one direction and then in another direction. And while it does this, it will average the open loop angle over the hall sensor positions that it measures and make a hall sensor table from this. And this one we've got this table. Just for fun we can write on 15 amps and see if we get the cable table that is very close. So first we hit apply it so that we remember the old table and then we try it again. Motor does the same thing as before. And let's see you can see that well you almost got exactly the same values. 85 changed to 86, so this is uh, very consistent in general. So, write configuration. Oh, and you also have to set the sensor mode to hall sensor and write. And there's one more parameter here it is the sensorless RPM. So, even if you use hall sensors, the motor is going to be sensorless at high RPMs because that is uh, better and more reliable and uh, also more efficient. And the default value is 2000 ERPM, and you can keep this one for now. And let's see if it runs using hall sensors. It seems to work. You can see that just when the motor starts, it's a, a bit more rough because the hall sensors are not well, perfectly aligned and so on. It does not run six step commutation, so what it does even on the hall sensor mode is to use interpolation between the hall sensor changes so that it gets a smooth uh, well, sine wave for the angle. <coughs> for example, we can uh, run real-time data, and for example, if you run it in due to cycle mode and set it to, let's see, 4% duty, you can hear a bit of clicking, and this is from the hall sensors, and just when you go above this, you can see that when it goes to sensorless, it's slightly more quiet, so Sensorless is a bit more smooth. You can also see the current waveform changes a little bit, but they are similar enough, so it's it does work well. So stop the motor, activate the non track again, and let's give this a try. <coughs> So 
So it does work nice this move as well. Now, in most cases, you think you're fine without hall sensors, but for example, if you are going to start when you're running, riding uphill and you're rolling backwards, then the hall sensors can help a bit for in, uh, well, stopping long when you're starting forwards again, but I think in most cases, it's also fine without them. But to get this little bit of extra smoothness, you can add hall sensors, especially if the motor already has those. So, yeah. That's it for now.